Thanks again for joining us. This is Talking Leadership TV. Our guest today is Andrew Sullivan. Andrew is a University of Tasmania PhD candidate examining novel governance for a changing ocean. He returns to the academic community after more than 20 years of experience in fisheries research and management, consultancy, and most recently in industry representation. He brings both a government and an end user perspective to the complex intersection of governance, policy, science, and industry development. Navigating this complexity is critically important as the world transitions into a low carbon future with the ocean playing a key role. Andrew has identified the high-level panel for a sustainable ocean economy, the Ocean Panel, as a case study of a novel multilateral governance intervention. Through key informant semi-structured interviews, Andrew will describe the origin story of the Ocean Panel, then follow its work to investigate its impact and effectiveness. I know you'll enjoy today's podcast, but enough from me. I'll hand over to Andrew. Andrew, thanks for uh, agreeing to have a chat with me, mate. So we're we're talking leadership as as I want to do, but uh, to start things off, your leadership and its beginnings. Take us through that, mate. My leadership and its beginnings. Um, look, I, I don't think I'd sort of have been very conscious about leadership, my leadership journey anyway, until probably the last 15 years, I'd say. Uh, that was when um, leadership became something. Um, I was aware that leadership meant something else. Um, I think up until then, I just enjoyed um enjoyed being with people seeing people thrive have fun do really well at their work and that was something that i sort of that's my natural disposition and then so probably it was around i think it was around 2008 um my then boss sort of gave me a book around about leadership and he brought in a whole heap of things around teamwork and things like that Uh, and he said something about oh i'm really enjoying you know where your leadership journey is going to go and that so that was probably the point where I realized that uh, leadership is something and maybe my natural disposition um sort of led me to to being able to be a leader and and, and put those skills to use that's an absolute goal of response I, I love it when a more senior person comes to you with some books or some readings and goes hey I, I think you should have a look at this stuff which which is a uh, passive aggressive way of saying yeah i think you need to read this stuff but i'm not going to sell it to you quite that way um okay yeah. that, that's a, that's an interesting start to the conversation mate so let me ask you um in your travels and again using any reference you like on this um your definition of leadership please yeah it's um i did listen to some of your podcasts so i knew this question was going to come um I'm in an interesting point in my life now where I said this to somebody the other day. I, I'm trying to, I think leadership, everybody's a leader. That's the way I look at things. Um, and I want everybody, I think if the more people recognize that they're a leader to some extent. That's interesting. And um, just, just as an aside before you go on, uh, something I'd like to share is in the military podcast that I did talking to X. And currently serving military people, they pretty much said the same thing that we train and breed leaders at every level because it's it's a necessary part of what we do. And you seeing everyone as a leader, is that because you see it in the kernel of everyone's being that you meet, or is it behaviors that you see, or is it your just general philosophy on what leadership is for you? Probably a little bit of a little bit of everything there. Um I do see that in people. I think I naturally like to see the best in people so I can sort of see that in people. I think one of the other things, though, is I think by putting leadership over up here and talking about leadership that's in a way that's not relatable to people, it sort of makes it seem out of reach or that you have to be special or that leadership is something that you have to do a course for and things like that, whereas people are doing acts of leadership every single day in their lives. And I think if we can get them to recognise that what they're doing is an act of leadership, it just becomes normal and it inspires others then to to lead and to to do things and you know, to make the world a better place, I guess. I knew I knew this conversation would get interesting. That that's a really interesting response and it's not one I've heard in, in as in as far as for me, the process of leadership is at times necessarily complicated because you're dealing with other human beings. But 
at its core, for, and this is for me, and I'm, I'm only sharing my view here for Sen Eric Perez's view of leadership, is leadership as a process doesn't exist with people, right? And if it's about the management of other human beings and a shared vision and pathway to get to some particular goal, whatever that goal might be, um, that's that's the easiest way to put that is it's a people process, right? That yeah. that keeps it fairly simple. Where the complicating bit comes in is people are in jobs and are in careers for all sorts of reasons. We don't all have the same motivations to be there, but at our core, we want to do a job and we want to do it well. I, I would think maybe that doesn't apply for everyone, but that's my hope is that you want to do as good a job as you can, not necessarily being a leader, but being in there and giving it a go. So it, it's interesting about making, demystifying the process. And it's as complicated as you make it, I think, is is part of this, or at least what I'm seeing or hearing from my guests. Does that, that ring true for you? Yeah, absolutely. So if you, I mean, if you look at it, everybody's, you know, everybody's in charge of their own life. So they, they make decisions every day. They're, they're part of a family. Like you say, they're part of a team. If you want to look at it at that basic level, you know, they're part of a team there. They're doing acts of leadership before they go to work. Um, and so obviously as you step up into bigger companies or more complex environments, then the act, you know, leadership, the process of leadership becomes more complex and it becomes more difficult um, and you need to rely on more people and all those sorts of things. But at the heart of it, it's still, I think it's still the same. Let, let me ask you this, um, getting to where we've got to in the conversation, and this is a bit that I um, I particularly have um, an interest in, not, not just from trying to develop myself professionally, which these podcasts help me to do, but to understand leader capabilities because that's the space in which my uh, thinking is at the moment. What For you, what do you believe are critical or core leadership capabilities? Um, yeah, so again, I'll probably, again, life's, you know, the sort of the core things for to live a good life, I think, is uh, integrity. And I think that's crucial for a leader. Um, if you're if you're leading other people and wanting them to follow you and uh, then you need to, to live by the words that you say um, and you can only do that by demonstrating it. So that's integrity. Um, honesty goes with that, I think. Um and something else I've been thinking about recently, we talked in the intro, I uh, had a friend pass away this week. Um, you know, she was quite young, 47. And one of her one of her strengths was kindness. She was just kind to everybody that she came across in her life. And, um, yeah, I think re- reflecting on that this week, I think if you can bring kindness into your leadership, I think it's a really underrated skill. Um, and, in fact... <laughs> I actually, um, I knew this question was coming, Eric, too, and I thought um, last night my daughter came home from guides and she she got elected, she's only nine, she got elected as a patrol leader for for a guides group, um, which was really cool. And I was putting her to bed and I said, oh, um, you know, how do you feel about that? And, and she was like, oh, yeah, really good. And I said, oh, what do you think, um, you know, when, when you're leading your kids, what do you have to do as a patrol leader? And she says, oh, I have to get them to do things. I said, oh, what do you think um, makes a good patrol leader? Um, and she said, being kind. Um, and I thought, oh, wow, <laughs> that just made me really proud. So I think, yeah, don't underestimate kindness. Um, I think I think, I think, think um, a lot of the corporate world and things can be quite brutal at times. Um, so, yeah, bringing in a bit of kindness is good too. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, the 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 spread of responses to that particular question is is as varied as the people that I've spoken to, and yeah, it it often comes up. Some of the what what in some of the literature you read is called your soft skills, understanding what those things are. I, I think it's in some ways the hardest thing to bring out and to to demonstrate kindness and authenticity and the things that you've raised and others that you have to be prepared to make yourself vulnerable as a leader to do that because as soon as you start doing that you demonstrate that you're just as human as the people you're leading and you have a title but that doesn't separate you from the herd it just brings more responsibilities on your shoulders than not 
And yeah, um, yeah, hundred percent agree. Uh, well, congrats to your daughter for the for the step up. You know, we you could be looking at the next PM. So don't uh, <laughs> don't um, don't under don't underestimate that at, at a young age that these things, these traits, can be um, fostered. I I don't. So I, I'm happy to share something as you did that when I was young, leadership and trying to lead people was the least important thing in my head until I started to do some studies and started to think about the world a little bit. And I think we all come to this very different and you chase different things. Um, I, I wanted to ask you this as an aside, but related to these questions, if I can, Andrew, is do you think you mature into a view of leadership as you go along in your career I'm I'm just talking in general, but if you want to talk about your career, please do. But do you think that morphs over time or do we all have a core of what we think is good and we just build on that over time? I'm genuinely interested in that, in finding out your response to that, mate. Yeah, look, I mean, yeah, life's, life's a journey of learning, I think. Um, and so the more you learn, you know, the more, I think the more you learn and, the more choices you've got, the more you see, and so the more, um, the more options you've got, and I'm just trying to think where I'm going with this now. Um, I just think the more you experience things, the better you get at something. It's a you know, it's a practice. Um, and so, and and you go in life as you get older, you sort of see things that are important to you, understand which things are important, which ones are not. Um, you also tend to not sweat some of the other things and just sort of um yeah you move on quickly and that sort of thing and so you and you can be uh, a little bit more on you tend to be more honest about things as well so i think as you go you know through developing your leadership develop maturing in life it all gets better and i know you hit this i feel like i'm in a point in my life where i'm hitting a bit of a sweet spot in terms of still um still got energy the mind's still pretty sharp body's still um, pretty good as well um, and yet I've amassed this knowledge over the last you know 20 to 30 years um, which I can put to use and and hopefully you know share it with you know the people around me as well yeah nice I like that uh, response so uh, share something else with me if you can looking at the world of leadership that you're involved in or have been involved in, what do you see are still some key issues that remain, let's say, under addressed from a leadership standpoint? Yeah, it's look, I think um I've been involved in um yeah, you know, the the fishy the seafood industry um for most of my career. Um and you look at that and you look at I think all of society though at the moment, I think we're gonna look back at this time to see it as a pretty incredible period of change i think society is changing a lot at the moment i know we've had covid but even you know you look at climate change the things that are happening in our world i think we are going to look back at this time and go wow there was a lot of change happening and with change you know that that means a loss as well like some things are, uh, are taken away from us during periods of change and i think people you know people that worries people as well and so it's a you know, navigating through that is difficult. And so I think it does require leaders to really sort of stand up and, and make difficult decisions, challenge themselves, challenge the people that they're leading as well. And so I think from that point of view, I think it's it, t- it's, it takes a toll on people as well. Um, and so I think, again, if we we're a little bit kinder to our leaders, it would be helpful, <laughs> um, a bit kinder to ourselves because, you know, it does bring out the best, but it also brings out the worst. You know, you see that, you know, um, you know, when disasters happen, you know, you see the best in people, but you see the worst in people. And so it's a bit like this change, this period now we're going through, you know, we, we are going to see some amazing things, but it's also we're going to see some, you know, some of the, the darker sides of people as well, you know, people looking to bring people down and undermine them and those sorts of things. So I think... Um, I think if we can focus on a bit of that kindness during this period, I think that would benefit us. That was uh, expertly responded to, my friend. Uh, one, one one thing I know you didn't say out loud, but I know that's what you're referring to, and it segues quite nicely into it, is around uh, 
a post COVID nineteen um, leadership space, and I've I've specifically brought this question or this theme in. Sorry, not wanting to stir up bad memories, but just to try and see what we've learned from um, what what I believe is we're getting into this post COVID period. Although it's still around, it's it's not a pandemic in a sense anymore. We're not locking down. We're we're a bit more freed up than where we were a couple of years back. But from a from a leader perspective, what are the, some of the lessons that you've been able to glean from what was there from a leader perspective? So if I'm asking you to put that hat on and you've you know, obviously you, you interact with leaders across the industry, not just fishing, but possibly others, have you seen much of a material change or is it too early to say? Um, look, my first response would probably be no. I, um I, I I can see it's going quickly back to to the way it was before. It's sort of uh, a bit of a rush back. Having said that, I think there is some pretty significant structural changes to the way we do things that have obviously happened. Whether it's changed the leadership, um, my leadership, I don't think it's changed my leadership too much. Um, I think I think it, during a period like that, probably what it does do is it brings a focus to things um you know like a crisis brings a lot of focus to things so you sort of learn you probably learn you might have progressed a little bit quicker in your um in the development of your skills your leadership skills or your crisis management skills those sorts of things but i'm not sure it's fundamentally changed the way leadership occurs sure that look that's um that's an interesting response on a number of fronts for for me, what I draw from that response is the process is hasn't been impacted, and I, I think I agree with you there. The bit that's um, that's still that I'm still sort of weighing up in my own mind is if there really hasn't been fundamental change, it was more around the structure of work and how you deal with people during a crisis, and whether or not you're you have the strategic now in your business and in your own operations to deal with challenges as they come as quickly as COVID threw up. It's more what do we learn from that that we can keep that makes us better at the process because what what I've been hearing and I've been sharing this on the podcast is people have been, and I'm trying to paraphrase here, so I don't want to specifically go into quotes, but from paraphrasing what what I think I've been hearing is that uh, from a, you know, taking a post COVID-19 lens to all of this is you look back on your practice and it either highlighted the very best parts and nature of human beings as leaders. And, but it also highlighted the very worst part in people. And I think it's, it's an extreme to go that way because we were under, an unprecedented situation that nobody had a uh, a guidebook to get through yet it it must have changed us in what our practice in some way i mean th- this is ripe for a study and i'm sure there's going to be any number of books written about this but i just get this feeling that as much as we we collectively will revert back to type there's going to be resist there's going to be long term resistance to that because covid brought up some shortcomings in a lot of our leadership processes, not necessarily the people. I'm sure they were good, bad, and indifferent through this like any process, but I think there's a bigger conversation there that we're not having because we don't want to go back to a traumatic period. I just I just get the sense that there's something there that we're still not um, coming to grips with around the leadership stuff, I would I would suggest. Yeah, look, um, I should, um, should catch this as well. I, uh, I was in Tassie during COVID, um living in the bush yeah like living in a bush sort of setting access to clean air good food you know activities i actually also spent uh the last two years on flinders island as well in bass strait which um you know when covid was there it was you know it was a pretty free free sort of living so um so we'll put put it in that but going back to you know the best and the worst like yes there was so much tolerance uh, and acceptance of things and everybody did their bit everybody took a you know um took one for the team and and that like you say that 
the, the best of people to put others first was amazing. Um, and we saw it right around the world. And and I think that's a reflection that as human beings, we do we do deeply care about other human beings. Um, and, yeah, I think it's, it's inspirational to see what happened and the way people looked after each other. Um, now you do, you also look at now the return and, you know, we, we, you, know you, you hear of court cases of, you know, uh, employees taking employers to court because they want to take them back into the offices and things like that. And um, you just think that's when I go, oh, have we really, you know, how far have we come? Um, maybe it's a two step forward, one step back thing. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting experiment. And uh, yeah, I'm sure there's work in there, Eric. Yeah, no, I, I, I just have this niggling feeling that maybe we haven't learned all the lessons that, we could take out of it but that said um current appetite to go back and really dig into what 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 did this all mean for the leadership process i think that should be an ongoing conversation because we can learn from that and uh the, the 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 um the what do you call it the the base from which we can draw on is any human being that was in a leadership type role could contribute to that conversation because we were all stuck in it at the same time, this is, wasn't one unique set of people. Like, I, I would suggest to you uh, that that fishbowl thing around. Let's say COVID only happened in one country, and one country went catastrophically bad, and the whole world just kept on business as usual. It, it would it would be you know an interesting view to view it that way. But the whole planet went through this. Uh, some more than others, and like uh, in your situation, you were away from humanity and. Away from the worst of it, and and uh, all all the luck to you for having been there and and avoided some of this. But for those of us that didn't, I think there's still some lessons to be drawn out. And um, oh, I don't know. I'm not trying to catastrophize here. I'm just trying to get a sense of where this conversation is. And the more I keep having this conversation, the more I just there's something tweaking in the back of my head going. There's there's some underlying stuff here that we still have to unpack, and maybe that will happen down the track because it is still very fresh in our minds. People have lost a lot of loved ones. There's been a lot of death and, and bad health as a consequence of this process. So I kind of understand why there's still some more thinking to be done around this because people are still getting over the the real social impacts of what the pandemic meant for us outside of anything to do with work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look, and I think, if you, I'm not sure if it's just, you know, you're uh, reading this at the moment or, you know, being a bit more interested in leadership, you know, you, you know vulnerability is a big one, you know, that, that's talked about in your own leaders. And I think, you know, there was nowhere to, there was nowhere to hide or you had to be vulnerable during, during COVID. And I think people went, oh, actually, that wasn't so bad when I was vulnerable. My, my team still supported me or, you know, um, so, you know, it's, but is it because it was such an exceptional situation, um, or maybe it, it that, that that does start to pervade the leadership qualities we're going to see more and more, you know, you know across our uh, across society? I'm not sure. Just to finish this off, one thing that um, was has been brought to my attention previous podcasts, and it, uh, for some reason it's come up now. Um, this thing around uh, understanding what we want as a society from our leaders is also going to be shaped by those you lead. So this mm. isn't just going to be oh, a yeah. conversation that leaders have amongst themselves, our teams, um, other organizations that we deal with there, people are going to say, no, no, this is the set of behaviors we want to see. And this is what we expect. And um, we're not going to move away from that. And that is going to throw up all sorts of other interesting discussions to be had around um, going back to business as usual pre the pandemic in some people's minds is not no longer acceptable. And I don't think that's going to change. Yeah. Uh, look, and if you look at it from a demographic sense as well, like we're entering into a new period where, you know, the baby boomers are exiting and, um, you know, the, the millennials are coming through and they're not, they're not going to put up with that stuff either. So um, they're going to demand things are done differently. Um, and so it's going to be a pretty exciting I noticed, you cut out, you, I noticed you cut out the Gen Xs, which is us. So we're we're, it is. we're, we're, we're not we're not quite old enough to leave 
uh, the world of work, but we're not the millennials anymore. So we, we've, we're the forgotten uh, cohort there, I think, mate. <laughs> well, I th- actually, it's funny. I, um, the Gen Xs have got a real, I think we've got a really important part to play. We, to bridge the gap between the old and the new, if you like. Right. Um, right. Because they're, they are, I think, you know, when you look at the boomers and the millennials, they are quite, you know, there is quite a difference. Whereas we have, we straddle those. Um, and so I think, yeah, I think we've got We're a the role eternal to... optimist, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I, I yes, I am. Um, but we can we can take the best of what our you know parents and that their generation have given us. Um, but also look, we can see the future as well, and so it's our role to foster those guys uh, and bring them in. I think and and give them give them the opportunities. Um, and yeah, then hang on for the ride. So the nature versus nurture issue, um, are leaders born or are they made? Look, as I guess I started out saying that I think we're all leaders. I think we've all got the capacity to lead and we do. We all lead in some aspects of our life. So I think um, uh, I think uh, leaders, uh, well, I guess I guess leaders are born, but they're also made. Um, <laughs> like uh, we're all born, aren't we? So, uh, but I guess... Leadership is a practice as well. I think you can, you know, you like and like a like a sport. The more you practice, the better you get at it. And like like any sport too, some kids, you know, some kids are born with just that innate ability to hit a ball or to kick it, you know, kick a ball. Um, and but then, so that they're going to have some people are going to have a desire to to hone those skills more than others. But um, and so, and they're the ones that will. They'll go up. They'll rise quickly through the leadership ranks, if you like. Um, but yeah, definitely, it's in us all. Um, and I think if people take an interest in making, you know, developing themselves and and their skills, then they can apply those skills into whatever sort of part of their life and leadership roles that they've got. I think. Yeah. Nice. Thank you for that. Final topic area, mate. If if you can indulge me on this one, is looking back at your leadership pathway. What would you tell a younger version of Andrew Sullivan about being an effective leader? Um, I'll share a little story, actually. I, I remember um, I was probably in grade about seven or eight, I think, and there must have been a, an election or something like that in the class. And uh, I, I, said a, I said a line, like, oh, I think I'm a bit of a leader. And... You know, the, the smart ass kid in the class started ridiculing me, like, and thinking, Oh, yeah, he's a bit of a leader. Yeah, he thinks he's pretty cool, and all this sort of thing. And I remember, like, I've reflected on that. And I remember thinking, Yeah, when, when he did that, I sort of sunk down and, and he, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to put myself out there. Um, and so, yeah, now raising my own kids who are, you know, 13, uh, 11, and nine, I don't want them to sink back down when they stick their head up and say they want to leave. So I think for me, it would be, you know, don't worry, you're going to get a few cracks at you if you stick your head up, but, you know, keep your head up. That's probably what my message would be. Thanks again for joining us, and that ends today's podcast. I'd like to thank Andrew for his time and insights regarding his leadership journey. I'd like to thank you for your support, and again, please drop a like or subscribe to help the channel grow. Have a great day, rest of your week, and we'll catch everyone on the next episode of Talking Leadership TV.